Hello, my name is Bram Stolk. Uh, welcome to this walkthrough of my uh, game engine. And this game engine walkthrough is going to be about indirect light. Now, as in a typical video game, a little dude with a torch, we can jump, we can move. It's all good. But where it gets interesting is this object here in the shadows. Now, the torch is behind this wall. So normally there would be no light on this object. But what happens is uh, the engine calculates indirect light, which means that photons from this light source hit the floor here and bounce back onto this object. So instead of being in the dark, we can actually see this object um, using indirect light. Now indirect light in video games is very rare. Um, Unreal can do it, but that's only semi real time. Uh, if in Unreal Engine you uh, make significant changes to the light, like turn off a light or move a light source. It can take up to half a second, a second before the light, indirect light converges. In this engine, this is not the case. Every uh, frame, uh, a complete solution of the indirect light is computed. So, now it's in direct light and now it's in indirect light. So that means that in this game we can have um, uh, things like uh, nearly dark, almost no light, a little bit light, um, those nuances. Uh, which a typical game engine would just gloss over with an ambient light setting. And this game actually computes the, the diffuse reflections between surfaces. And as far as I know, this is unique in this game. I don't think any other game does um, a full light solution uh, at 60 frames per second. It's a little lower now, below 60, because uh, I'm recording this stream on my uh, CPU. And also, um, this is running on very low-end hardware. So I should show you this. Um, let's see. This is on an RX 580 which is antique by now, six years old. And not only that, it's clocked all the way down. Normally the GPU runs at 1300 megahertz and the memory at 7050, but that gives a record um, uh, with the fan noise. And so um, I've turned it all the way down. So uh, this is this is getting close to uh, integrated graphics performance. It, it's faster than that, but not that much faster. Um, so yeah, uh, let's go back to the game. Um, so uh, this is the game mode where the a uh, little dude walks around and we compute the light from his torch. And observe how we have indirect light now in this room. Uh, yes, but um, it also has an editor mode 
and that is what I want to uh, demonstrate here. So let's make a new world. Um, we start with a blank slate. You have got a palette of primitives, and uh, let's uh, let's build a tower. Um, let's put up a wall with the basic block. And some stairs. Um, let's see. So in the editor mode, all the photons are um, shot uh, from this um, light in the sky and um, dispersed over a large area. So the, the light is a lot noisier, but as soon as we switch to in-game mode with light from the flame, a lot of the noise goes away. Um, let's see. So I attach uh, new primitives to another block and I can press the R key to rotate them. Okay, so to make it <laughs> a little more feasible uh, physically, we're gonna add supports. The pillar base goes here. So now it actually looks like it's standing on something. Let's put another one uh, right here. And where's the base? Wait, that's weird. Where's the... Huh. Am I missing a piece? Oh, this one. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Um, okay. Let's uh, finish the platform here. Notice how it gets very noisy now because uh, this light source here it shoots all the photons on this plateau which get bounced back into the atmosphere and if we move our uh, let's see if we move our uh, avatar we can stop 
Change the platform a little. Um, I can also um, select areas and then make copies. With holding on shift, I can copy these stairs and then attach them here and now it's twice as wide let's do the same here I select wait and until this yeah and twice as wide one more time and attach there so Um, so let's see what we've made so far and so um, the reason why this uh, very feeble GPU can do all these calculations in real time is um, well, there's a very fast uh, compute kernel for the intersection tests, but also the primitive count is really low. So in this entire scene, the algorithm has been able to simplify this to 53 boxes in total. And here's another example of indirect light. Uh, the flame is uh, above this platform. Oh, <laughs> let's not go too close to the edge. So these pillars here get uh, indirect light. Here is another example. This wall is uh, illuminated by this floor and this wall and now it's in the full light okay we need a place to sleep so in minecraft style let's place a bed which is two primitives in this case. So we made a interesting little world, only 60 primitives. And the GPU computes two, the path of two million photons, uh, what they strike and then bounce in two million other directions. And this is all computed uh, in real time, every frame. Now as a bonus, we will do one more thing. Um, let's, uh, let's delete this bit for a minute. Um, we're gonna make a little pit with a black hole inside. Now, <laughs> what do we find in this black hole? Let me demonstrate. Um, first of all, I'm gonna turn off the debug drawing. What's in that black hole? We can find out by pressing the N key. A little spider friend. Okay, let's see how fast you can make it down.
Come on, buddy. <laughs> I love it when they climb vertical walls. I haven't decided yet how to incorporate the spiders into gameplay. Uh, will they be adversarial or uh, the, the leading character? The protagonist? Shoo, shoo, shoo. Let's get another one. So yeah, indirect light on an old GPU, under vaulted, under clocked, and all in real time. Oh, what happened to the spider? Did he fall? Ha! Huh. I guess they can fall. That's the demonstration for today. Thank you for joining and until next time.